this week's episode of PO Sports Talk, I'm Lizzie Arbogast with Sean Michael, and we've got some playoffs coming about. Not before we have some snow coming about. Oh, more snow. I hate it. <laughs> I'm so over it. I'm definitely a Virginia girl. Um, so District 3 playoffs start on Friday. So we'll start with the um, Waynesboro boys who are going to travel to Lebanon High School, hopefully, on Friday night. Yeah, as long as snow permitting. I mean, um... What we know about Waynesboro, you know, transition, offense, good defense, but you have some information on Lebanon. Why don't you tell us about them a little um, bit? Yeah, so we got some info. Um, it looks like Lebanon has two scores that are both in um, averaging double figures for the season. Um, they also have some uh, another, you know, tough couple of defenders on their team mm -hmm. that maybe don't score a lot, but, um, you know, can put down a, a good defense. Uh, sounds like they've got a couple of good reserves off the bench. Um, that are all some, some decent guards. So, you know, it's hard to tell just based on records. I mean, they don't have any common opponents. They've never right. played each other this season. Yep. It's really hard to tell. I mean, uh, last season, one of the football coaches described a district playoff as a blind date. Yeah. <laughs> because you really, you don't know what to expect. I mean, you, the way it sounds, I mean, it sounds like, you know, Waynesboro has two double-figure mm -hmm. scorers. Lebanon has two double-figure scorers. Waynesboro has some decent reserves. Lebanon has some decent reserves. So... Seems like it should be a good game, I yeah, think. We're set up for a good game. I mean, you have, you know, what we're used to seeing from Connor Federhoff, Devontae mm -hmm. Montgomery, Seth Hoffman, and, you know, they're going to have to shoot well to win. They're That's Wayne's Bros thing. they got to play good defense and they got to shoot well. Um, they've lost three of their last five games, albeit against Boiling Springs and Carlisle, no, no right. slouches. Very good But, teams. you know, they're, they're going to be looking to turn things around, and I, I expect them to come out, you know, with a lot of energy. I wonder if the road thing is going to matter, because Lebanon is, I mean, it's a track. It's a, probably yeah. close to two hours for Waynesboro. Um, I know they travel well. They're trying mm -hmm. to get a, a, a fan bus to go down. Yeah. So I think the fans will be there, but two hours of sitting on a bus. Yeah, I would say the biggest thing for Waynesboro is they got to really come out with that pressure on defense, mm -hmm. get a big lead, and maybe quiet that crowd so that they're yes. not a big of a factor down the road. Right. That's that's their biggest thing, I would say. Right. Um, and then our only uh, only girls team in District 3 playoffs is uh, Greencastle Girls. Yeah. Um, they struggled a bit last night against a very good um, Cumberland Valley team in the mid-conference playoffs. We weren't I lost a frosty to that one, by the way. Thanks, Greencastle. <laughs> <laughs> um, which we weren't, um, you know, too shocked about. Cumberland Valley is a very, very strong team, yeah. but Greencastle probably did not play its best game. No, they they shot very poorly. I mean, they they scored very little in the first half. They were held scoreless halfway through the first quarter. I don't think Greencastle brought their best game to the table, and I think they're going to learn from that. They haven't had hardly any adversity this year. I mean, their closest game was a two point win over Big Spring, but other than that, I mean, they've dominated every game. And now they finally, they got they got hit in the teeth a little bit. And right. I think that's going to help them going into playoffs. Right. And also what's going to help them going into playoffs is that they have a very familiar matchup. They're going to host yeah. Gettysburg in the first round. This one's not a blind date. This we is, know a lot about this one. Yes. And <laughs> Greencastle has beaten them by at least double figures. An average of 21 points, yeah. Right. The and first time they played, it was close. Greencastle got out to a big lead, but they never really built on it. But the mm -hmm. second time, they, they beat them by almost 30 points. Right. So we'll, we'll see which, which game comes about. I mean, I think Greencastle is going to be ready to play. I think Mike Ryan's going to have them have them going, right. I would say. Um, and then they should uh, should have a decent matchup if, if they um, mm -hmm. are able to advance. Yeah, they'll play the winner between Lancaster Catholic and Susquehanna. I mean, again, we don't know much about them, but... You know, we'll have to find that information as we go. We'll have to wait that game. When does Lancaster Catholic and Susquehanna play? That would be February 22nd, which is okay. sat next Saturday. That so, and um, Greencastle is hosting its game on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, over in District 5, uh, deadline isn't quite yet, but things are starting to shake out. Uh, we'll start with uh, girls because Southern Fulton's doing really well again. Yeah, Southern Fulton jumped actually to the number one seed in um, single A girls and. Um, they have a game against Everett tonight, but we don't expect them to lose. But if they would, they could drop back. It still doesn't seem likely. I think they have that pretty much locked down. Right. So they would start, you said, next Saturday, next right? Wednesday. Next Wednesday. We'll host a game. And as of right now, the eight seed is Myersdale, so that would be the team they'd face. But, again, that's changing. Myersdale still has two games left, so there could be a fluctuation in that. But as of right now, that's who they're set to square off against. And then we have McConnellsburg, who's at the five seed, also with two games left. And as it stands right now, they would play Con Connemaw Township, who also has two games left. So, again, you never know. They could go up. They could go down. I'm sure they want to try to get a couple wins and get a home game. They would definitely yes. love that. Right. Um, over on the boys' side, we actually have quite a few teams um, that are going to probably make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, in single A, 
boys, uh, the top eight teams are going to make the playoffs. So we've actually got um, Forbes Road, Phantom Metal, and McConnellsburg, um, which might bring about some eye popping because yeah. <laughs> Phantom Metal and McConnellsburg both have losing records and are going to look to probably make the playoffs. Um, Phantom Metal could face off against Forbes Road, who currently only has through five losses. I think mm -hmm. they're 13 and five as of right now. Mm -hmm. um, and McConnellsburg uh, will probably finish the eight seed if they do make it, and then they would play Berlin, and that would obviously be a very, very tough game yeah. uh, as their number one seed in the district. For you, when you look at Forbes Road possibly facing off against Phantom Metal, how would you see that playing out? I mean, they've already played each other twice this year. They have right? played each other twice this so, year. So, I mean, what would you see from that game? You know, Phantom Metal, I think they've been doing some good things lately. You know, they've been getting, Ben Metcalf has been getting a little bit more involved, mm -hmm. which has been good for them. Um, Mikel McGee, I know, has been really, really strong for them this season. But I just don't see them being able to overtake the offensive strength of yeah. Forbes Road. Um, because Forbes Road has a lot of people that can put down a lot of points on any given night. And they can shoot the ball really well when they want to. Yeah. Um, in Double A, Southern Fulton looks to probably have locked up the second seed of uh, District 5. Uh, which means that they will get a bye through the mm -hmm. first round. Yep. So. Unless possibly Forbes Road beats Northern Bedford, which is Friday night. Right. And I think that might be the first time in a few years that Southern Fulton is rooting for Forbes Road to win a game. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Rivalries go out the window when the seeding comes into play. So, got a lot coming down the stretch. So, until next week, enjoy the games.